What is good? I got wrapped up in the music. Sorry. Took me away. Boom. Nice. Fresh, fresh crack. Drink my beer, bitch. I didn't crack one because my just Your cut my fingernails. fingernails. Wouldn't have worked out well. So it's mucho, also late. Mucho agua. Fucking peeing all night. <laughs> Getting old. All right. So mucho agua. <laughs> uh, we did a cell episode last week, maybe. I don't know exactly when it came out, but uh, the start of it was, you know, Tyler Algier, and he's going to be the, the rationale behind him is going to be the crux of this one. It's going to be kind of players to sell before the NFL draft. Must sell. Five players you must sell before the NFL draft. I think we got more than five. We, got, we definitely have more than five. Uh, but we'll, we'll put see. the five in we'll the We'll put title. the five, yeah. Um, <laughs> you guys like to know how many you're going to get. Yeah. And if you could just hurry up and list them off. Just yeah. list them off. Well, we're going to get there. And then we can leave. Yeah. We'll, we'll be done soon. This will all be over <laughs> soon. Um, <laughs> There's time stamps if you just want the fucking list, okay? Sure. Um, so Tyler Put me Algier, work on these time stamps. We, I, I said was a sell because of they didn't bring anybody in and they had a lot of money and it almost screams to me that that they're probably going to invest semi-highly in another running back just because they haven't shown you anything different that, that, that they kind of want a, a bigger committee. And maybe Algier will be the guy, and this is all for naught, and Algier is an outstanding value right now. But hey, you got to take some chances. I wanted to, you know, kind of can't just buy everyone, Casey. Move that same logic over to some more guys who might could get their value hurt in the draft a little bit. Um, hey, th with, this, this is a good title. We got the draft coming up. Right. Can you can you get out a little bit of a risk here? Can right. you maybe? And I think that's kind of what this comes down to, because I hate being like, you know, you're just mitigating some risk here because right. any of these guys could be fantastic players for somebody you, that you're you know? not even thinking about could get you know just cr you know just absolutely slayed right oh. but you know the, i mean shit kenny walker could get crushed nah it's not happening but I, I, you know i'm just saying like just somebody who you're not expecting that ain't happening uh, not kenny dubs not kenny <laughs> three sticks not kenny could no. never happen to him Dude, travis just knock travis out of the etn fucking park with him travis etn could get crushed you know ah uh, that's that's like a little more likely but i still don't i'm just saying somebody that you're not they about, should use good. Travis E.T. at the end more. Fucking mad efficient. Fucking Let's go. sexy. But fucking go, go, ahead and, go ahead and buy Dearness Johnson right now. He's super cheap, and they seemingly clearly want another guy in the fold in Jacksonville, and I think he's a good underused running back. was in our mustache video uh, from a long time ago, so go check that out. A lot of some fun numbers with him. Anyhow, my first guy on this list is Rashad White. Um, in the same vein as Tyler Algier, it just, I'm, I'm not sure if they necessarily view him as their guy to be every down guy. They've been rumored to Bijan, now rumored to Roshan. Um, you know, it just seems like they could be in a spot where in rounds one through three, they possibly invest in a, another running back. Um, and it seems to me that Rashad White could be one of those guys that's, that, that is at the top of my list to get hurt by the draft. And I would, for compensation, I would take any, any high-end second-round pick to re-roll into one of these, you know, regardless of who you like. I mean, I, I would love to re-roll him into Michael Mayer, uh, Dalton Kincaid, any, any of the running backs that you like, whether it's the Zach Evans or the Spears. I don't know which end of the spectrum you like, but you kind of catch... Catch my drift here. We're talking super flex tight end premium. Correct. Anytime we talk about ADP or rookie draft picks, you know, early second, that's tight end premium. Uh, or sorry, also super flex. Again, maybe he goes out unscathed and he's great and, and yada, well, yada, yada. He, even if they, you know, I could see them not drafting a, a, a running back of note, but uh, what's that offense going to look like? Well, sure. Year? That's the other you know, part is like, it's, it's a little which, scary. They're not going to have the number, the you know, most check downs ever, the most passing, passing attempts ever. He's probably going to be like a usable running back for you because if he's the guy, you know, unless but they you're, draft Bijan. you're meeting any, why would the, they do that? They're not what, ready to go. Well, they don't need to be. They get five years of Bijan. You don't need to be ready to go. It's actually kind of like a nice little luxury pick right there for you. And mm. I, you can you can suck with Baker and Bijan and then potentially get, you know, I, I don't know what they're going to do, but they've been linked to a little Bijan Robinson. He ain't going to make it to it. Well, I guess they didn't. They didn't have a great year. So 
They probably I mean, have they, they, they made what the playoffs. Like? But just because that division stinks. Right. Um, so I don't think he's going to make it that far. Maybe not, have, but who knows? They had to move up. But rumored to some running back visits. So yeah. I, I'd move off of Rashad White for me personally, anything with a high It's a, a good two. risk mitigator. You know, he's 86 in DLS ADP. You know, Brandon Ayuk's right there. Marquise Brown's right there. Charbonnet is right there, who's, you know, probably going to be a late first in Superflex rookie draft. So Christian Kirk. I kept them off the six guys to avoid in your startup list because I wanted to throw them on this list, but I'm never looking well, at them. Lo- I'm never looking at them in a startup either. Mm-mm. Yeah, a little bonus content. So, Go check that video out. Get Players to avoid in your rid startup. Rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I don't care. Um, that needs to be louder. All right, let's move. Let's move on to the next guy. And these next two guys are really, I really, I like both of these guys a tremendous amount. But again, rumored of, I know Stevenson, Ramondre Stevenson is going to be on this list. And I'm not necessarily saying to sell him. It just seems like there has been some rumors that the Patriots are heavily linked to Bijan, which would be kind of weird. And the the Patriots also have never really shown you that, hey, we're just going to run this one guy out there hmm. who's great. And, you know, it seems like they always want some sort of a rotation. They brought in James Robinson. They drafted Pierre Strong and Kevin Harris last year. Um, Stevenson was exceptional. I've been drafting Stevenson everywhere I can. And it's, you know, I thought maybe that it, we might get through here unscathed, but it, it, it seemed well, like... Well, you did. It, it, he got you, a value bump here because they didn't re-sign you, Damian Harris. You did Harris. with everything, but now it seems like almost like that there's been a lot of running back talk there. So, you know, if you wanted to get off Stevenson, I'm probably going to hold, but I'm saying... Yo, I, you I, take Stevenson in like every one oh, of these I drafts. fucking love him, man. I love where you can get him. I live, if, if he goes unscathed, the value is, is ridiculous, and he was so good Yeah, last he's year. a fantastic player. Big I guy hope they were just the like, load, hey, catch. we found our guy and we're good, but they, they haven't really shown you that I mean, that's it's been what since they're like willing to do. Who was on, was it Corey Dillon or it's been a minute since they like let one guy really. Yeah. And I think Stevenson can, and maybe, maybe they will. Maybe they'll, they, they saw, like I said, they say they signed James Robinson. Maybe they've got nothing to do with Bijan, but Bijan seems to be fairly trendy to them. And that would be a killer for Ramondre. I just don't really understand why they would do that. Um, but if, when have they ever done anything that was trendy for you, them to do? You, you wanted know? to, you know, mitigate that risk. I, I what would, do you need to get? I, I need, need to a, move I, off I need a, uh, one of those high, like a higher end first, something, something in the top six or, or a lower first plus something. Top six. Because I for sure like flex. him better than just about every running back in this draft. Not named, um, Gibbs, not named or Gibbs or or uh, Bijan. Bijan, and then you know if if you could if I could if you could if I could swap out if Charbonnet gets a, a nice spot, I you you could convince me to to swap out for there, but it's going to be too late um, at that point if if I want to get rid of Ramondre. Um, and then and then the other guy would be, you know, Tony Pollard in the same vein. Now, Tony Pollard can operate with another guy, and it doesn't make me as scared. He's only signed to a one year deal. He he shut me up this past year and, and showed me he could be mostly the guy, but he definitely operates better with another guy. Um, I don't exactly know what the fate is, but you know they're all, the, the Cowboys are also linked to Bijan a fair amount because hey, we just lost Zeke. We're not scared to to, to pay running backs and and do other things, and and we can bring in Bijan right now for and go and and plug and play and and not worry about it, and we'll let Pollard go next year. Uh, potentially also been drafting the shit out of Pollard. <clears throat> right. Right. You've been drafting these guys. You say you most so I know, draft. but, and I hate it. And I, cause I really like both of those guys. And I really think that, that they're set up for fantasy glory crushing this year and really helping you win. Uh, but it does, I've been getting more and more worried. So with Pollard, it's kind of team situation, right? Cause he is 25 and he is on a one-year contract, and you do like him with Dak in the Dallas offense, and that's probably not going to be the long-term case there. Right now, Zeke got cut. His value went up. People are out there could potentially be thinking that this is his backfield right now. Mm -hmm. That elevates his value. When they inevitably draft another running back, his value takes another hit. That's why I'm down and putting him on the list because his value will take a hit when they inevitably draft a running back. Now... That not, might not be justified because, right. like you said, he, he almost needs to exist with somebody else, and, and he can. 
But when Zeke went down, it really the ceiling went up there. But then that was a fluke injury, so I'm not going to say he did get hurt because of the workload that he got put on. And it was actually pretty impressive. You know, yeah. like he said he shut you up, he shut me up. Well, we were both against Pollard prior to that, and it's like once we see well, that he had, we had do it, gotten a couple of spots, and it would never and it, really and pan it didn't out. Work out, and then, and then all of a sudden, you know, 75 yard touchdown catches and shit. So yeah. You really saw it, it blossom before your eyes. and But now it's like he's still 25, which isn't super young. Be 26 before he moves on from Dallas. He's probably not going to go get his own starting gig. He's going to take a value hit yeah, after he be, just be, got a bump. He'll be 26 going into the season. Mm. Yeah, I mean, which I don't hate that, but people do. And this right. is his value. But like, also never a big workload receiver in, in high school or at least True. I mean, he college, wasn't even so. pl- – I think he came in as like a wide receiver, like to Memphis late. I could he, see Eckler I could see Eckler moving on, Pollard coming into the Chargers and absolutely slaying uh, with Kellen Mond. Unless or the Chargers Kellen, take Bijan. Kellen Moore. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's fucking mapped yeah. to Bijan. Right. Because he's a top seven talent in this draft is whatever, what they say, you mm-hmm. know. So anybody can take Bijan. So I hate, I hate Stevenson and I hate Pollard. But I, I I understand it a little bit to mitigate risk. I'm not you hate saying doing to it. sell them. Right. You like them, right? Well, let's move on to someone that I actually do hate. Who's that? <laughs> that you should be selling right now. Who? Because he has any value at all, and that's Penny. Rashad Penny. Get rid of him. Stat. If I can get anything with it, that resembles a two. Yeah, I think a second is is a trade away for Penny. Eagles could potentially draft another running back. Yeah, come on. Um, that was a cheap ass signing. They didn't pay him very much money. He was dead. There was no value to Penny's name. Yeah, and I'll I'll pick up Penny all day long for for nothing um, because I do think when healthy he he is a good player and has put good stretches down. What'd you um, say? Is and, that ADP was like one thirty four, and he could be, and then that that. Their ADP is right around about Rick. a month, usually about a month behind. Yeah. Um, so let's see what month this is for. What are we in April now? So this is not April. This is March. But they start collecting. April so I, I understand the penny. But like, like you said, again, value bump. Maybe they draft somebody else. He could be really good in, in this scenario. But then he's going to get hurt. He is not going to last. You, you got it. Like Reg- there's value on his name. There never, there wasn't any. Regardless of if he gets hurt or doesn't get hurt, really. I mean, if he stays healthy, maybe, maybe he's awesome. But just, I know we all like the idea of, of the Eagles running back, but the way they deploy their running back from week to week, it could, like Miles Sanders is infinitely better mm-hmm. than uh, Rashad Penny is at this point current juncture they didn't really throw it to miles sanders necessarily who i don't know why you wouldn't do that and then you know they'd put boston scott in at the goal line jalen hurts runs it into the goal line uh kenny gainwell had a nice surge in the playoffs kenny g um so you know i i agree i i don't hate penny like you do there's <laughs> always have there's some guy out there from when we did our uh mock draft uh rookie mock, rookie mock, mock it up who what was really going hard in the paint that we were dumb for fading penny a little bit well suck it pal um oh we've gotten plenty of hate who was uh but anyhow yeah any second for penny fine with me i know we're talking a lot of running backs because There's Keyshawn vaughn fucking guy out there that was mad that i hated <laughs> Keyshawn Vaughn. Or didn't want to take Keyshawn vaughn wide receivers are a whole lot harder to I was really? like, admit you don't like Leonard Fournette. That's all you got to do. He's yeah. like, I don't hate Leonard Fournette. I just love Keyshawn Bottom. Like, no, you fucking don't. Wide receivers, you kind of know going in. Do they need a receiver? Do they not need a receiver? Are, are they going to get bumped off their value? So I know we're talking a lot of running backs here for for selling before it the NFL It was tough draft. to find the wide receivers because, yeah, it's. I feel like I don't know what's going to happen past the top, like, right. four wide receivers. Now, you, you kind of mentioned we could we could have thrown digs on one of these lists. And, you know, I don't, I don't know that his value necessarily goes down because they do draft another guy because they need another guy. But people it, are saying it, that they need to take. It's basically just weapons. the fact of that. I'm never really looking at him and where he's going. He's, Not in he's the older. Right. And if they maybe they draft another guy who can kind of, you know, take a little. He's had nobody to take anything away from him. Right, people um, wanted Gabe Davis to assume that rule role. People do like Shakir McKenzie does his thing here and there. He's not even there anymore. Right. Crowder's out of there, so the the analysts are mocking, you know, potentially a first round wide receiver there. I don't think that really. 
I don't know that that's going to lower Diggs' value. With Diggs, you should almost always be trying to shop a 29-year-old wide receiver unless you're trying to go. And if he didn't have the finish to the season that he had last year, it would be a different... Like, if he didn't average basically like four or five yeah, points he, a game was, through weeks 14 to 17 when you really fucking needed him, he ghosted you. Yeah. If he had helped you win, he then wasn't he'd be far up there off. where, you know... He wasn't far off of a career uh He PPR still is a year younger than... than Cooper well, Cup, those, couple, and, those older class, and Devonte Adams. So he goes ahead of them in startups. But I'm taking Devonte and Cooper Cup over, not over Diggs, but I'm passing on Diggs and taking those guys later. I got Cooper Cup at like four twelve in one of these mocks. I'm mm-hmm. like, that's fantastic value yeah. to get a guy that could win you a league next year. Yeah, so but, I, could, I could see that. I don't know if you'd necessarily have to sell him before the draft, but right. If they do draft a wide receiver, then the narrative could get created. Oh, See, this is going to take away. Somehow squeeze a wide receiver. In yeah. There. I mean, I got another wide receiver. Let's go Pacheco here. Okay. I'm going to go back to it. Right. I'm going Pacheco. I'll take any second I can get for Pacheco. I don't know how I feel about this one. I, I mean, I don't. I'm, I, I, they got free money with Pacheco. Under, understood. And they fucked up with Clyde. You can go either way with that, though. They got a seventh round totally guy. They got a seventh round Pacheco. guy, and it's like, hey, why not? Why not take another stab on another guy? I also think that that Ceh is going to come back in and, and carve out himself a little role. He was on on fire in the beginning of the season. He had three or four really good games right off the rip, um, and then then was hurt, and and you know. Climbed his way back in. You know, I think if CEH, maybe, I don't know what the McKinnon contract situation is, if McKinnon's even still there or not. I just... I don't think he's there. I was looking through depth depth charts for this, and it's it's. I think it's only Pacheco and Clyde. Yeah. So maybe they do bring in another running but back. So, so Clyde's only been in the league three years. They did not pick up his fifth-year option, but he is going to play this fourth year. I could, I could sell Pacheco right now because it looks really good tantalizing for him seventh round player and I'll, I'll i'll just try to take my money and re-roll it into one of these second round running backs that i like we did a dynasty breakouts video like i'd few, rather have kendra miller a few videos back pacheco i get that um and i think we had we, you wanted to talk about jameson williams so we formed the narrative that we formed the dynasty breakouts around just wanting to talk about Jameson Williams. We threw Traylon Burks in there, and then we discussed James Cook at the end as a guy. Are you buying or into or staying on board or jumping ship of this dynasty breakout well, did, in YouTube? Did you think he was going to break out. Someone in YouTube hit us with a one word comment and just said Pacheco under the dynasty breakouts video, and I was like, you know, I I, I could see that too. I could because he didn't like break out. Right. Like he scored a touchdown in the Super Bowl, so that's kind of like breaking out. Yeah. But like he didn't, he didn't have a breakout stretch of games. He was like okay. They they it took him a while. He had a breakout preseason in camp, but then didn't really do much. And then they finally started working him in. And then but but there's some runs in there. Yeah, that was for sure. He's just like this man is fucking hungry. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. he runs fucking hungry. Like yeah. he don't have food to eat tonight. He's out there fucking getting it. And sure. I like that. Me you know, too. I like that. And I don't know what they're going to do. I, I, I don't think they're going to fucking draft anybody that's going to tank his value. I think they could very well pick somebody up, especially if they don't have anybody else on the roster. So if it's just him and CEH standing there kind of by themselves for the most part, I think before they add somebody in the draft and maybe hurt his, his stock a little bit, I think he went in the 11th round in this last draft that we just did. Yeah, 11-8. Um, I don't hate that. I mean, I'm never really looking at him, and and if their depth charts look a little I see him. right He's now. not really ever in my queue, but I see him. I see him over there. Pacheco a sell for me for any two. I'd rather re-roll him into into something else. But you're right. I, it's not. It's not. I don't necessarily dislike him. I just I would I would try to suck some value out of him before maybe they bring in another guy potentially later in the draft again um, to fill out that room. But I, I do I do like the player a, a fair amount. It just seems like he's risen up. He does go before some of these second round running backs are going to go. Um, and, you know, if I could if, if I could re-roll him, like I said, into whether it's whatever your poison is, Zach Evans, Tajay Spears, you know, Kendra Miller, Tank Bigsby, Izzy. They got LaMichael P. Ryan on the roster, apparently. Yeah, I'm not fucking worried about that guy. Yeah. Um, so, anyhow, did you have... You don't like it. I don't love it, but I, I, I think I think there could be a potential another little dip in Pacheco if they do bring somebody in who's anywhere from the third to the fifth round of running backs. 
Yeah. Plus, I think Clyde comes back in and, and takes back some of that backfield. All right. Well, you want to go the quarterback or the wide receiver next? Uh, well, I, I'll, th- I'll throw the quarterback and you can wrap up with the wide receiver. All right. Jimmy G, uh, pre-draft, got a, got a, me and Big Co have made a couple of comments on this, doing our thing. You know, just the fact that the Raiders seem like they're in, in a lot of cases trying to figure out how to move up and they're get visiting a, a lot of quarterbacks, get a, get a quarterback and, you know, Jimmy, them. Jimmy will, uh, will get, uh, I'm sure another shot somewhere to, to do his thing, but it would seem like if you, you, you know, you're going to maybe get a season of Jimmy G and then who knows exactly what's going to happen. Jimmy could be back in a situation where he's kind of looking over his shoulder. There's another guy. He's still under contract. Yada, yada, yada. And I know Jimmy isn't sexy and probably isn't fetching. Oh, him. he's real sexy. I mean, he's physically <laughs> sexy. Um, but before they trade up to go get another quarterback, I, I would try to package up. You're not going to stand alone. Jimmy sell him. But you can package up Jimmy G as the starters Raider starter right now, potentially, and try to move off of him and maybe upgrade the quarterback position, Jimmy and, and, and another quarterback on your roster and a pick to try to get, you know, up to something that seems maybe a little more stable uh, or a little more fun. Like even really going from Jimmy Garoppolo and figuring out how to get to Jordan Love would be, you know, fine with mm-hmm. me. Yeah. Well, you said you're not going to get a bunch just for selling Jimmy, but you, you package him up, upgrade him because let he me is go to, let me figure out how to get to Brock, the starting quarterback. Right, let right. Me now. Figure out how to. So they gave him a three year, seventy two million dollar contract, only thirty three or thirty four, basically guaranteed at signing. So that's like a one year rental, and yeah. it does say potential out eighteen point seven dead in twenty four to cut him, mm-hmm. but that's the potential out, and it feels like. Bryce and Stroud are gone at one and two. So now it's like, who wants to come up and get one of these two developmental quarterbacks? And who can, although depending on where they go, like Will Levis might have to start. But it feels like like these teams are trying to figure out how can they go get like Anthony Richardson and let him sit. And Jimmy G would be a great situation for that. Derek Carr would be a good situation for that. I don't know too many other situations that, you know, it depends on how far they fall and who, because because the Vikings right. could come up and get involved. I mean, the, the Bucks, could the come Raiders up and might get not have to do anything and get Will Levis. You know, right, right, yeah, and, probably and not. The, 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 the Seahawks, you know, right. could come in here and do something with one of those guys, but or they could trade that pick to somebody. You know, it's just right. A lot of dominoes that could. Arizona's fall. probably going to trade like one of those two guys is probably going to pick three. Right, the Cardinals have picked three. They yes, don't need yes. a quarterback, so they should. Right. They probably need to figure out how to trade back. Yeah. Because it's like nobody wants to put uh, the the Alabama uh, Will Anderson. Right. Yeah. No one wants to say he's got to be the first defensive player. They want Jalen Carter, but I mean. Stop breaking the law, asshole! You know, like they're mad at Jalen Carter and he, he's just continuously. <laughs> but someone's going to take the gamble on him. He's going to fall a little bit. He should be pick three. I think the Eagles said they're going to take him if he's there. Well, I. I don't think the Lions will pass to. on him if he's, yeah. you know, like. So uh, I mean, something Lions could trade out too potentially. Well, if these quarterbacks fall, right. anybody could trade out, right. and anybody could come up and get him. You know, right? So you got to try and move on from Jimmy if you can get something for him because he's got all of a sudden he got traded in a contract, and you're like, oh shit, Jimmy's back. You know, and I've been taking Jimmy in some of these mocks real fucking late because it's like he'll be a star somewhere. You know, he's like yeah. the new Ritz Fast, Fitzpatrick mm-hmm. with a little less like ceiling, <laughs> but a better floor. Like he's going to be starting around the league if he's healthy. Yeah. He, well, if they yeah. cut him as a potential out in fucking 24 and he's 33, he's going to go somewhere else and probably bridge someone else. Sure. You know, so I'm 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 down to see what I could get for Jimmy right now. Yeah. Pre-draft, baby. Let's go. And if I can't get something decent, if I can't, then I'll just hold on to him and I'll have Rich Fitzpatrick for the next you know, <laughs> three to four years on my team. Yeah. All right, last guy. Who you got? Rashad Bateman. Batman. Batman. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> How do you feel about that? Just off the rip. I mean, I, you I, said I texted you that and you were like, why Bateman? Pre, well, just pre, I, I, cause you know, you could kind of say the same thing about Pacheco pre draft. I don't think, you know, why is he on the list that you got to sell before the draft? Just maybe depth chart being not great. But for Bateman, it's like, I, 
they don't have a great receiving core and I'm not really scared if they bring in another receiver cause they just don't have any other receivers. Um, well my, that's the thing, right? Is like, I listen to these mock draft shows, the ESPN one and the NFL network one with Dan Jeremiah and Mel Kuyper and uh, you know, sure. for from time to time they're mocking wide receivers to Baltimore. And that's not necessarily a knock on Rashad Bateman. There has been, he threw some shade at the organization on Twitter they kind of threw some shade back to him on Twitter. Well, they kind of the GM said something first about how they haven't drafted any Hall of Fame wide receivers or whatever, and I don't think and he they, said something about y'all need to set us up for success or something. Yeah, like that. well, and I don't, I don't think he was necessarily taking knowingly taking a shot at Bateman. Bateman just hadn't played. Like that's just he's been hurt. They did they spent a decent pick on Bateman. Yeah, I think so, it was like a second somewhere in the second. Yeah, it just seems like so I like Bateman and I, I would buy Bateman after yeah, the draft when they draft a wide receiver and his value goes gotcha. down because when they draft a wide receiver his value is going down from where it is right now which I, I don't think even think it's like that high you know so it's not like you can get I don't know he's kind of in that limbo area where you might have some truthers that still want to buy in first round for Bateman first round 27 overall last end of the first round look mm-hmm. at that all right my bad Way to check it. I don't know what you can get for Bateman. There might be some people in your league that still like Bateman. When he gets dra- when they draft a, another skill position player, which they need to do, it might not still it might not be a knock on him, but if they do draft a guy, his value's going down and you can mitigate your risk a little bit here. <sighs> and then me. buy in after the fact. You know? I he hasn't been healthy. He's shown flashes here and there. Hasn't been able to stay on the field. Don't know the, I don't know that it's going to get better if Lamar Jackson leaves. And it's not that great with him there either from a pass-catching standpoint. And if they draft another wide receiver, that's only going to muddy it up more with the volume that is kind of scarce. So I'll be down to try and move uh, Bateman. And then and then maybe if I don't have him, wait till after the draft. Maybe purchase Reacquire. a little Bateman. Yeah. All right. I don't hate it. It's hard to find a wide receiver because to put on the don't. Draft must sell list because it's like I'll take any of these guys when the timing is right. And well, I mean, the, you know, the moral of the story is, is I mean, if, if you should basically be selling all the 22 wide receivers because yeah. they're not Justin Jefferson right off the rip. So they freaking stink. And, that, you know, you got to sell Garrett Wilson because of this. And you got to sell Chris Olave because of that. And you got to sell this guy because of this. Garrett Wilson because of Alan Lazard. They get the fuck out of my fucking and, face. And, you know, just a lot of, you know, it's just like, well, if you can, if you can pair him up and move up to Justin Jefferson. Okay. Maybe, maybe so. But like, yeah, if look, you can pair up to Justin Jefferson, then fucking do it. But like, you know, everybody wants to tell you to sell. Who's moving all, off of Justin Jefferson? To sell all these good guys. Like, I mean, you got what you wanted. These guys came out, they performed, they did their thing. Got what you wanted. And and just you know, hang on to these these really good players. Jalen Waddles, you know, great. And CD Lamb has been great. Outlier. Jalen Waddle. Oh uh, yeah. Bad dominator. Bad breakout age. Who'd have thought? So you know, that's you got you got to sell all we these did. these guys who are who who came out and crushed because but because they aren't Justin Jefferson right now. You know. You don't want to sell them and, and pair them up and move up. And it's like, dude, they're already like second and third round startup picks. Like, just fucking chill. That's the problem with being on Twitter. And I feel like a fair amount of you guys that listen to us and gals don't aren't on Twitter. And that's good for, good for y'all. <laughs> um, but if you're on Twitter because you like getting news there, you like interacting, you like tweeting, it's a cesspool. And it's just like... <laughs> If you're not the best ever, then you fucking suck. And like, I just don't get it. It's like no one ever wants any depth. I think that's the no general, one wants to build a fucking team. The general sentiment like, in dynasty in general is just if you don't have all the best players, then you know what are you doing? Like, what did you get into dynasty for? If not to wait until they become good, because you know the talent's good. You just need the situation and the health and the timing to click, and then boom. How many times did you play redraft and you were a year or two too early on a guy? That's right. why you joined Dynasty. But then you're going to flip right back to acting like you're playing redraft and just bail on a guy because he didn't come through year one. Yeah, and then they did kind of, and then you're still upset that they're not the best ever. So, no, I mean, I, I agree. So, But th- these, aren't our, these aren't our favorite shows. Uh, yeah, y'all better have clicked on it, though. 
<laughs> but we had we had some fun putting it together, having some fun talking through it. Yeah, we're not like the must sell and the fucking it's, avoid, it's, you know, because there's context and a time for. I'm not against anyone except for like Rashad Penny. Just like we're in the rookie process, it's not about. I don't. I don't go out there and shit on all these players. I find out. I figure out what these guys do really well and and what I don't like about them a little bit, and then I I rank them accordingly. And to, then what's the value? I think this guy's better, and this guy's not, and then I tear them up, and then. I, you know, and the draft will shift that value and then right. you just change accordingly, you know? Right. That's really all this, all this is, is, but there's so, man, when you get in that third round, especially in your home leagues, people do not know what the fuck they are doing. Yeah. And you can take, you can move around. It's super easy to move around in those later rounds. Sure. And if you're paying attention and you have guys and you like them and then all of a sudden the draft capital knocked them out of the second or whatever it is. You can find guys you like. So, like, I, I hear people come on and be like, oh, you got to sell all your third-round picks. It's well, like, man, you, I want to take stabs. Yeah, man. well, yeah, yeah. kind of getting that. You, you said that when JB was on, and he was saying, how to, hey, you should trade all these second-round picks because, you know, after the draft, they're all going to kind of, you know, drop down a little bit, and you should get ahead of it and sell it. And you were kind of going the opposite direction. And, I, I you know, I tend to agree you well, know, everyone's yes. dead to me if they don't go in the third, or second, or first round right. of the NFL right. draft. And it's like, oh, because no one ever has been any fuck. And you miss out on all the outliers who are some of the best in the fucking game. If these outliers weren't some of the best in the fucking game, if Amon Ross St. Brown wasn't a second round startup pick right now, then I'd be with you on the avoiding fourth right. round players. Or T. Higgins. Well, or he was, first, he was at the top of the second. Doesn't matter. Still top of the second. Nobody it wasn't, it wasn't the one guy no, overall. Second, second no, day, fuck that. Day two draft capital. T, T. Higgins is doesn't matter. I'm just saying, like, and he in, in, been your, the first. in your rookie draft, like, he was end of the first. Like, he wasn't an automatic. Justin Jefferson was not the top of that fucking class. I got both like, of them at, like, eight, those, nine. Those guys are, draft. you know, C.D. Lamb was, and it's, it's held on. Yeah. And, and, and Jamar Chase was, um, you know. AJ Brown pushed down to the bottom of that bad landing Brown spot. Diggs, nope. Um, definitely not Tyreek Hill. Uh, Devonta Smith, you know, middle of the pack, but Jerry Judy still hasn't quite got got all the way up to where he was, you know. So it's just no. You're talking about higher end value players who I'm are just, taken I, early in the NFL draft, but I, I'm talking about the later round guys. No, who I, I, I've taken. I feel yeah. I mean, Cooper Cup, was Cooper one of the, Cup, you know. perfect example when he ran a four six four or whatever dead to me he's right. dead to me and i took him in the rookie mock it up and it was like oh can't fucking do that i want to take can't take him and like it, the, the fucking matt kelly was just crucifying him made some stupid fucking picture on player profiler of him and now look do. at him but and like you now know, look at him you know, you know my, flipping it around you know marquise brown some people had him in the first round i was like no way i'm touching him in the first round of a rookie mock or a rookie draft and now i'm all about drafting Hollywood Brown because the value kind of right. balanced out and, right. and I really like Hollywood Brown uh, so you know it, it can go either way and it's just all about the value uh, for me and, and DJ Moore was supposed to be the best ever and maybe a situation didn't pan out and he's you know kind of been a little middling so it, well, it can he, go all of the freaking ways man you know DeAndre you, Hopkins wasn't got, got beat up and wasn't supposed to be awesome because he was too slow and couldn't separate and yada 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 and he was he's been fucking awesome right off the just, rip too there's just a lot of guys his rookie year you were like oh shit i fucked up not taking down your hop like you said there's a lot of outliers and saying how you how you want to sell all your picks in the second because they're going to fall off after the actual nfl draft happens that's fine like i want to take i like a lot of these guys in the second round so i'm going to take those swings that's what we're doing like i want to you want to know how you on, win and retool at the same time you fucking nail draft picks buy 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 fucking five second round draft picks and try to and get you hit nailed all three the of them. later round yeah. draft picks that's how you win yeah. and retool I had, at the same time i have a, a team that i've been rebuilding but I hit on on my. I, you know, I'm not gonna call Tony a hit because that didn't necessarily hit yet. But I drafted for two games there with the Giants. I drafted it definitely hit St. Brown, Ramondre, and I'm trying to think who the third guy was. All in the second. I had uh, like four or five second round picks, and I hit with all. Oh, I drafted two in one with one of them. I I believe that it was maybe that class. Um, I'm trying to think who the other guy was, but just a whole bunch of really good second round picks that have really helped the depth of my team and have all climbed up the rankings and nobody wanted oh i drafted rondell Moore, so he hadn't he hadn't really hit yet necessarily. maybe aj dylan too but, uh that i don't have aj dylan on that team but 
That was like five picks, and I, I took a bunch of those guys, and Tony and, and Rondell haven't necessarily panned out yet, but they, they certainly fucking could, and it was just a bunch of second-round picks that everybody thought, for whatever reason, they didn't like the profile, they got drafted too late, yada, 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 and hey, I fucking stuck with the process. I like those guys. I owned a bunch of second-rounders, and I fucking stuck with them and crushed it. So, you know, you can play it however you like to play it. That's why, that's why we play this game, because some people like JB will automatically sell all those twos, because they don't like the, the prospect of maybe, hey, there's going to be a bunch of running backs to go in the fourth to sixth round. And pro the probability of yada fucking yada is whatever. Well, just don't pick the wrong fucking one. How about that? Yeah, um, these probabilities really but chat my ass. Yeah. I have a hard time with them. I get it. But, like, man, if I looked at the probabilities, I would never have Amon Ross and Brown on my team. So rambling at the end of this one. Yeah, I've let's get the, the hell out of here. Button way too many times. Right. Someone's mad about it. Appreciate oh. you making it this far. Yeah. Hit I'm me out. with that five star review. Hit me with that subby. Come over to the Patreons. We got extra shows. We got Discord channel. We got ADP. We got mock drafts. We got mock draft reviews. Having a good time over there. Missing out if you're not over there. And if not, if you can't, if you can't, just give us the, give us a subby, give us the five star review. That'll help us out too. Sure. Revelrybrewingco.com for the T-shirt. Putting the F back in, putting the fun back in fantasy. That's yeah. what the F is. F is for familia. Yes. Your favorite dynasty podcast. Favorite dynasty podcast. Gotta Appreciate y'all for joining us. Don't you fucking not say the F. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. Peace.